kale bona kumbuka na kwarehema zihu ishe roho zetu kwa roho taka tifu uh, amen amen tupe moto ulio waka zamani uh we're going to stop there uh, there's no one who has raised their hand so we're going to stop there because of time so that i can welcome our speaker to continue i welcome you all to participate in our discussion and so that we can all get blessed allow me pray as i welcome the speaker our loving dad thank you so much for being with us thank you for your love to us thank you for getting us through the week uh thank you for giving us even the 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 strength and to work throughout the week when as we rest through this about rest may your presence may your presence be with us and help us to do according to thy will as we going to start our discussion of the lesson may you go ahead of us help us to understand more about you and that may speak to us with clarity this evening get our speakers we're going to to speak unto us give him what to speak unto us may hold the internet for us till the end of it we glorify your name pray this trust and believe in jesus name amen amen you can type amen if you can hear me you can type amen thank you so much and i welcome our speaker to continue a uh, very good evening to us happy sabbath from wherever you are getting uh, this particular uh, broadcast from i want to thank you all for taking your time and joining this particular meeting it is indeed not for granted because it is written in heaven in that book of remembrance that one day one time you gathered in jesus name even if it wasn't physical but it was online friends at this moment i want to invite the holy spirit to be with us o holy dove of god descending you are the dove that knows no ending all of our shattered dreams you are mending spirit now come live in us o holy wind of god now blowing you are the seed that god is sowing you are the life that start as growing spirit now come and live in us O oh, holy rain of God now falling you make the word of God enthralling you are the inner voice now calling and as i'm even coming to the end of my presentation today i pray that father lord that may you and your spirit call us today to come for the pardon of spirit or, or, or the pardon of uh, of sin spirit now come live in us o oh, holy flame of god now burning you are the power of christ returning you are the answer to our yearning oh spirit come down and live in us friends i want to believe i'm loud and clear and if i'm loud and clear i like you to type amen from wherever you are please type amen if you can get me praise jesus praise the lamb of god and if you can get me loud and clear without no epinethos and uh, discombobulations and barrications please type amen and then so that i can see thank you thank you god bless you god bless you good people mungu awabariki sana mungu awabariki daudi mwenyewe akaandika hivi heri niwe bawabu katika nyumba ya bwana kuliko mimi kukaa katika hema ya wanao tenda mao it is better for me to be the watchman in the house of the lord than to be than to be uh, or than to dwell in the tents of the evil doers and i want to believe it is a prayer of each and every one of us that it is better for us to be the watchman in the house of the lord you know some trust in chariots some in horses but we will remember 
the name of the Lord our God, as we trust in that name, the sweetest ever name. And I'm reminded of a song, it is so sweet to trust in Jesus. It is so sweet to lean on him. Jesus, Jesus, our only comfort, our only friend, whom we can run to all the time and you get to be saved in Jesus' name. Friends, I'm just trying to do a bit of introduction and I try to encourage you you whom Satan has convinced you otherwise this entire week, you whom work has uh, desperately uh, tortured you this week, you whom you have lost hope the entire week, you who feel like you are at broken in one way or the other, there is a hope for you. There is hope for you tonight. And I'm encouraging you from the book of Psalms 91, verses 1 which is written he that dwelleth moses i like you now to to at least mute your microphone so that we can be on board together thank you for listening to the voice now moses god bless you and the book of psalms 91 and verses number one it is written that he that dwelleth in the sacred place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty i will say the lord he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. Him I will trust. Friends, if you trusted your friends this week, your parents, your workmates, your bosses, and they failed you, let me tell you today, the only person who is our refuge, the only person who is our fortress, is none other than our Heavenly Father. In verses number three, it is written, Surely he shall deliver thee, from the snares of the flower of the of the of the follower, and from the noisome of pestilence, and it shall cover thee with feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. That's where the writer of a song says, "Under his wings, under his wings shall I bide." forever and ever because i know i'm safe evermore may god bless us for those who feel discouraged may you be motivated tonight for those who feel at broken may your heart be brought together may god renew your heart and sanctify it and bring it together and give you a new heart today and for those who have lost hope in life may you your hope be rekindled again by the holy ghost and for those of us who don't see the future may god give us the spiritual sight that we may be able to comprehend and know the spiritual things because spiritual things are spiritually designed may god help us even as we embark to today's discussion i want to believe it is a spiritual topic and with our own intents and mind we cannot be able to understand not unless the holy spirit come down and fill our minds and open our minds so that we may be able to understand the scripture father lord I pray that may you open our minds. A time has come that your son must be lifted up and all of us must look unto him to get our salvation. Wash us our sins away and a time of call shall come, Father Lord. May you not harden our hearts, make them softer that we might heed the call and come to thee so that we may be saved in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Friends, I want to take from where my brother James left last week, and I want to believe he started by telling us that, you know, most of us, we have been busy talking, busy talking, but we don't do anything. And today, I want to remind us of this important quote that quit talking and start doing something. You know, most of us are good at kupiga stories. So nowadays, the vijana on a story is a jabba. When a zipiga took a piece of story, story, but they cannot do anything. I want to give you a story. A story is told of a man who married a woman, and this woman was so godly, but this man was a drunkard. And every time this man could come home late and uh, sometimes uh, beat the wife, and therefore he will come and find the wife has locked the door. And then he came, well, one day he came and found the, the, the woman has locked the door, and he knocked and he said, baby, Sweetheart, honey, open for me, it is me, your husband. And you know, I only have three words for you. I love you. And the wife was thrilled by the three words. 
and she went to the door and she opened and the husband came in and as the tradition is akamchapa tena na baada ya kumchapa akaamka asubuhi akaomba msamaa na baadaye tena akarudi tena kulewa the following day he comes home again drunk and this guy finds the door is knocked after knocking for a very long time he again says sweetheart Baby girl, you know you are my barafu wa moyo wangu. I only have three words for you. I love you. And the wife felt so good and said, "Oh my husband loves me. I can't allow him to be outside for that long. Let me go and open the door." And he went and opened the door. And the tradition as it is, the husband shouted at he at her when she, she was in the house. Kit her bad and of course thoroughly did beat her and um, the next day he apologized again now the third he made this one a routine until there is a day the man went and get drunk and he came back and he found the wife had already slept and he knocked on the door and say hey hello my wife i'm here your husband is here and after knocking seriously for a couple of 30 minutes the wife never woke up to go and open the door and therefore decided let me go to the back door near the window and knock the window of the bedroom maybe, maybe she's going to hear maybe she's dead asleep she's not hearing and she went to the window and knocked the window terribly and said hey my wife uh, your husband is home i have three words for you i love you and at that moment her voice was heard from the house and that voice was a voice of the woman and the woman said prove it prove it two words he said i have two words for you my husband prove it mm. you have been coming all the time telling me you will change you know you are not going to drink anymore you love me but you are still still the same you are never proving it i want you today to prove it even us we are more of talking we tell god we love you we do the quit talking and we start doing action even the english man said actions speak louder than words and that is what god is calling us he's telling us we have an active role to play in the mission not just to talk about it and plan strategies of doing it but to actually get our hands and get to the field get to the arena fold our sleeves up and start working for the master because the time is far much spent friends god's mission to us part 2 is what we are going to consider today part 1 was handled but i want to give you a bit of recap of what happened that god is trying to show us a perfect example you know most of us we have role models tuko na watu ambao tunaangalia tunatazama tunasema mimi nataka kuwa kama wao I want to do like that person. There is a time when I joined form 1 and then it happened when we had joined they were releasing exams for those who had done open exams. And there is this dude who was in form 4. He had scored a clean A and he was called he was number 1. And when he was called up front I admired him and he was like I really want to be like this dude. And uh, you know I never realized even started copying how he walks what he does i started emulating how he, he behaves how he talks because i really wanted to be like him he was like my role model he was my mirror i wanted to be like him and therefore in christianity the person who is a perfect example who is our perfect example friends let's go to the book of first peter now i want to believe we are there quick fast with our bibles the book is first peter chapter number 2 verses number 21 first peter 221 it is written for even here unto were ye called because christ also suffered to us leaving as an example that ye should follow his footsteps friends our perfect example is jesus our perfect example is god most of us we look onto other christians and that's why sometimes we lose hope in the christianity journey and you look at john and you say kai ule ni john anafanya hivi basi kama hii safari ya binguni iko hivi basi hata hata mimi siendi is that man who is doing that i because we are looking on to human beings and they are feeling us often god is telling us look on to me god never disappoints and how does he he doesn't disappoint he gives us a perfect example and which is his perfect 
temple, human beings, they fall short of his glory in the Garden of Eden. Instead of them looking for God, God goes ahead. You know, God is God. He could have chosen and said, you know, I'm God. I don't need to go down there. Let them look for me. Let them ask for forgiveness so that I can, I can be able to go down there. But God said, it, I'm going to stoop low and go and look for them. And God actualized his love because he said, I love humanity. And because I love him, I must seek to save him. That's why when Christ was on earth, he said this statement in the book of Luke 19 verses 10. For the Son of Man came to seek and save that which was lost. God intentionally looked for Adam and Eve in order to renew their relationship with him after they even disobeyed. His first mission relates uh, in the Garden of Eden and he is asking them, where are you? Even us Christians, our first questions before we reach people outside there, this is the first question you should be asking people. Where are you, by the way? So that I can hold a hand to you. I can hold a hand of you to Jesus Christ. Where are you? You come the way you are. Christ is going to change you. And you see, God did what he did to come and rescue us. Not only that, God actualized that by sending his only son to come and die for us on the cross he came and stayed with us here he showed us how we should be able to live and one day when christ was about to leave he told the disciples this i will not leave you as an orphan and if i go i will tell the father and therefore he will send he will send an helper who is this helper the holy ghost and I remember in the book of Acts 2 verses 1 when the disciples had set out their differences and they were praying up on the upper room the holy ghost ascended on them and they started speaking in tongues and indeed the bible is written in the book of matthew 28 verses number 21 and jesus said i shall be with you till the end of the age and indeed god is still with us you feel you are deserted you feel that you are left god says i am with you till the end of age sometimes you may feel you ask yourself you wapi huyu mungu Christ ambassadors, wakaimba wimba wakasema, who are you wapi? Who are you wapi wakati tunangahika? Who are you wapi wakati tunaenda kwenye mission tunakimbishwa na mapanga? Who are you wapi? Then wakasema, who are you ko pale pale maali alipo kuwa wakati mtoto waki alikuwa msalabani? That where Christ was, God was there with Christ and he is still with us in our turbulence, in whatever we pass through this particular life, God says, I am still with you. And therefore, as I'm proceeding with this God's mission to us, I want to tell you how the God, how God the Trine, when I say the Trine, I mean the Trinity, how God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they came in one accord and they decided to accomplish the mission of salvation and to reach unto us. And I want us to travel now to the book of 1 John, chapter number 5. Verses number seven, first John five, verses number seven. Very quick, first, first John five seven, and it is written this. this is what the Bible says, first John five seven, and I'm reading from the King James Version, first John chapter number five, verses number seven. It is written, For there are three that bear record in heaven the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Friends, I want to tell you that the original mission was arranged was arranged even when they are doing creation it is god the father god the son and the god the holy spirit who is one god who he manifests himself in three who is one sat down in the book of genesis 126 says let us make man in our own image and even after making man in their own image and after making man to look so wonderful and beautiful before the face of the lord this man even after sinning god says i love this man with an everlasting love the book of jeremiah confirms that if you read the book of jeremiah chapter number chapter number chapter number 31 now, chapter number 31, verses number 3, it says this, Jeremiah 31, verses 3, it says this, The Lord has appeared on the old, uh, appeared of the old unto me, saying, Yeah, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with kindness have I drawn thee. God loved them with an everlasting love. And he said, because I love them with an everlasting love, both of us, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, we're going to act on this mission. Our original mission is this. I, as God the Father, because I love the world, I'm going to send my own 
only begotten son. And that's where the writer of a song writes this song number 526 and says, God sent his son. They call him Jesus. He came to die. God sent his son. God the Father initiated the plan and said, now son, I want you to go down and be able to die for the sin of men. And the son was so willing. And the Bible says this in the book of John chapter 1 verse 14. And God and the word was made flesh and with men. And he came to his own, but his own never accepted him. And this is what is written in the book of John 3.19. And this is the condemnation that the light came into the world, but people People chose darkness because their ways were evil. What am I trying to say, friends? That the God, the Father, initiated the program. After initiating the program, there came God the Son. God the Son came and said, I'm going to fulfill the promise of the Father. And that's why when he was on earth, he said this, I have not come to do my will, but to do the will of whom thou sendest me. And who is that? And that is the Father. That's why Paul writes in the book of Second Corinthians, if you are there with me, you can travel second corinthians chapter number uh, chapter uh, chapter number five second corinthians chapter number five verses number 19 it says this to which that god was in christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and had, had committed unto them the word of reconciliation it is very clear friends it is very clear that god the father was in the son reconciling the world unto himself and when the son came and he decided to die on the cross and that time when he was on the mountain of gethsemane when he was praying and saying that the body is weak but the spirit is willing and that time he was praying to god that if it is your will that this cup pass away this cup never passed christ did drink of this cup and when he went on the cross he died eloi eloi lama sabakitani that god my god why have you forsaken me and at that time he raised his eyes to heaven and he looked at the people whom he is dying for and he said the word teteresetai in the in, in in hebrew in that word in hebrew it means it is finished and the one moment he said it is finished he said it is finished in the past it is finished in the present and it is finished in the future. And when God the Son died on the cross, he died after dying. He resurrected on the third day and he ascended to the heavens. And when he ascended to the heaven, he requested the Father. He said, now it is now the time for God, the Holy Spirit, to go down and finish the story of redemption. How is he going to finish? Christ said this, that when the Holy Ghost shall come, he shall not speak of himself. He shall speak of what is of Jesus Christ. In short, the Holy Spirit shall lift Jesus Christ. He shall convict men of their sin and tell men that they cannot be saved by their own works. And when men look unto themselves, they see they can be lost. And he tells them that there is only one way. And that way is which way? The book of John 14 verse 6 says, and I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That is Jesus Christ. And when the Holy Spirit convicts us of our sins and we realize there is nothing we can do about our sins, we look unto Jesus Christ and our sins get to be saved. That's what Paul writes in the book of Romans chapter number 13. Romans chapter number 13, friends. I want to believe we are there. The book of, is it 13 or 10? Sorry, Romans chapter number 10, verses number 13. It is written, uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 13. For whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Why? The writer, one of the preachers I love listening to, C.D. Brooks, said a statement here now. He said this, that if I look unto myself, I don't see how I can be saved. But if I look unto Jesus Christ, I don't see how I can be lost. Friend, there is hope in Jesus Christ. And when the Holy Spirit convicts us of our sins, he takes us to the cross. He tells us our pardon, our sins are forgiven by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And that is the mission. Christ came and died for us. The Father instigated the mission. The Christ came to fulfill the mission and the Holy Spirit is fulfilling the mission day in, day out, preparing us for our journey to heaven. And even us who are saved, it is a privilege now. We are being told 
Now, as much as now we have received the message, God has given us power to remember this. When Christ was leaving this earth, he told this to the disciples in the book of Matthew. Now, the book of Matthew, chapter number 28. Travel with me. The book of Matthew 28, verse number 18. It is written this, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All the power is given on is given in uh, is given unto me in heaven and in earth go ye therefore and teach all the nation baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost teaching them to observe all things whosoever i have commanded you and lo i am with you always even unto the end of the world we are to the Lamb of God. Friends, the focus of our mission it is not to just sit comfortably in our in our house of worship. It is not just to sing comfortably in our choirs and to sing in our congregation and to just present hymns and present items in our churches. No, 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 no. That is not the focus of the mission. Most of us, we are so reluctant of moving out and preaching the gospel. The main focus Christ gave to the disciples, he, tells them, he told them, go in there for Go, go. And when he was leaving this earth, he told them in the book of Acts, travel with me. Now the book of Acts, chapter number one. The book of Acts, chapter one, verses number, uh, the book of Acts, chapter number one. Uh, uh, travel with me. And verses number four, it says, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he, uh, which said he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, and but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, not many days hence. Verses number six in Azidic Sema. When they therefore were come to the gather, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore the gain the kingdom of Israel? Then he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the season which the Father has put his own power, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be the witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. That is the main focus, friend. People have lost focus in this life. You know they think about the about the about the gospel is all about getting church leadership. Uh, if I'm not elected elder this year, you know I'll cause wrangles. I'll not give peace the rest of the other leadership in church. No, it is not about that. It's not about kupigania via kanisani. It's not about sitting comfortably and co-staring in the church. No, that beautiful voice needs somebody else needs to hear that angelic voice outside there. There is a soul that is perishing. Why? can't you go and reach it out there remember our main focus it is mission and our mission we must reach out we must step our foot out not only you know people are like how shall i go no no, no. go the way you are carry whatever you have the master will use you with whatever you are they say little is much when god is in heat the fields are white the reapers are few and god is saying go ye into the harvest harvest now is telling us what you can you do you can't preach what can you do best you can give charity go out there are people on ataseka piana mungu atakubariki go do what you can do best that is the mission he has called us and that's why we are being told that this mission will be accomplished only on christ method and method alone how interacted with them not only interacted with sinners the second thing, he won their confidence. Not only winning their confidence, confidence, he met them at their points of need. And after meeting them at their points of need, he then tell he then he then told them, "Follow me. Come and follow me." And they did follow him. Friends, that is the only method we can use to accomplish this mission. Uh, this message. People uh, say, which gospel am I going to preach outside here? People have gone outside here with different types of uh, gospel, and they are trying to. To tell people stop wearing mini skirt you know it is bad stop being this no 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 don't touch about mini skirt you tell the soul about jesus christ and when that soul come to jesus christ christ will teach that soul 
how not to wear a mini skirt. Don't go telling people the braiding is bad. Don't go outside there telling people who are not even Adventists, who have not known the truth. Start telling them eating meat is wrong and this and this. No, 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 no. Present Christ. What am I talking about? The gospel, eternal gospel, should be the message of the mission because the Bible is written in the book of Revelation 14, verse 6 and 1. Mwenye injili ya milele, haibiriae kila taifa, kila luga, kila jamaa, na kila kabila, hakisema kwa sauti msujudieni buwana. Kwa kuwa saa yake ya hukumu, imefika. Friends, what am I talking about? I'm saying this for free. People are preaching a gospel which is not a gospel outside here. Mm -mm. The gospel is all about the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Telling the soul about the sweetest Savior who can be able to save to the uttermost. Telling the soul about the grace of God, which is so marvelous, infinite, matchless grace. And that grace indeed will save because it is written in the book of Titus. Chapter number two now, the book of Titus. Chapter two, I don't know whether you are there. The book of Titus, chapter number two, has even come to the conclusion of my presentation. Titus, chapter number two, verses number 11. It is written, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, godly in the present world. It is not our work. It's not our work. It's not our work to tell people what to wear, what to do this. It is the work of the grace of God. When they invite Jesus into their heart, Jesus will teach them which type of songs they are going to listen. Jesus will teach them which type of movie they are going to watch. Jesus will teach them not to watch pornography. Jesus will teach them what to dress, what not to seduce men. Jesus will teach them what music to listen to. Jesus will teach them what clothes to wear. Jesus will teach them what to read. Jesus will teach them what to do everything because when jesus is invited to the soul he changes because it is written in the pen of inspiration there is no not one soul that meets, meets jesus christ and remains the same there is no not one soul that meets jesus christ and remains the same because it is written in the book of second corinthians now second corinthians chapter number three verses number 18 second corinthians chapter number 3 verses 18 it is written very clearly second corinthians 3 18 but we all with open face beholding as in glass the glory of the lord are changed in the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the lord what am i trying to say when a soul emulates jesus christ when a soul welcomes jesus christ christ will change that soul christ will teach that soul christ will take a hold out from that soul christ is going to do something in that soul the book of ezekiel chapter number 36 verse 26 is very clear christ will do something it is not your work to change the heart of a person it is not your work that's the work of the spirit that's the work of jesus the book of ezekiel 36 verse 26 it is written a new heart will also will i also give you a new spirit will i put within you and i will take away the stony heart of your flesh and i will give you the heart of flesh friends i don't know whether you are getting this it is very clear even david knowing this he writes in the book of psalms 51 friends he writes this in the book of psalms 51 verses number 10 i'm there i'm there i want to read with you what the bible says the book of psalms 51 verses number 10 david knowing this let me start from verse 7 he says purge me with the hyssop and i shall be clean wash me and i shall be as white as snow go to verses number 10 it says create in me a clean heart oh god renew a right spirit within me cast me not away from thy presence Take note thy Holy Spirit from me. Friends, this should be a prayer we should be praying for our friends outside here. Those who have not known Jesus Christ, it is not for us to condemn them. You know, some of us, we go, we condemn them. That's why people even can't come to this Jesus Christ. And when they look onto us, they feel so horrible. They even don't want to associate with us. Why can't we present Jesus Christ out of them? A sweet saver, a sweet frankly says and when christ comes to the soul 
you will change it because it is written in the book of first corinthians 5 verses number 17 and when a man is in christ is a new creature look and behold the old has gone and the new has come hallelujah to the lamb of god friends we should go know that even if we are going to preach let us go out with an eternal gospel which gospel is this telling people that I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. And now that he is living, I know that he is living. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me. He talks with me. He lives with me. He, he does everything with me. How do I know that? Because he lives within my heart. He lives within my heart, in all the world around me. I see his loving care. And though my heart glows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blast. The day of his appearing will come at last. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. And when he lives in your heart, you will rejoice. You will rejoice, oh Christian. You will lift up your voice and sing eternal hallelujah to Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind like Jesus who lives in our heart. Jesus who lives today, who walks with us, who talks with us along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives salvation to impart. You ask me, now how he lives he lives within my heart does he live within your heart we are the channel we are the channel friends to present this god's message sisi ndio mwenyezi mungu mungu angetaka kutumia malaika angewatumia wakuja wahubiri neno god couldn't mama white right somewhere in the book uh, truth about angels he says that the power the the the, the special the special message which could have been given unto the angel has been laid upon humanity, has been laid upon Seventh-day Adventists to bring into accomplishment this message. God is relying upon us to preach this message. By the way, a, a conversation was had in heven. You know Christ, amerudi binguni, na Yesu aliporudi binguni, one of the angels wakamuliza, sasa wale wanafunzi, na wale watu wako, umewacha hivo? Sasa nani atenda ubiri? Yesu wakawambia, nimewapatia ujumbe, waende wa ubiri. Nimewambia, waende wa ubiri. Na sasa, wakikata kuhubiri, ukona backup plan. Yesu wakasema, I don't have any backup plan. They have to preach, it is them I have. Friends, God does not have any other backup plan. It is you and me. We are the only channel for this mission. The Israelites were chosen during that time of the, of the ancient time. They were chosen to be the tribe which could attract other tribes so that they can come and worship the living and the only one living God. But the tribe of Israel failed. They could not live up to their name, up to the heavenly standard. They could not attract people to come and worship this living father. And therefore, friends, right now our mission is different. It's not even attracting them. Our mission is to go and fetching them. It is to go and bringing them in because it is written in the book of John 10 verse 16 that other sheep I have and they don't, do not belong to those into this flock and them shall you bring them and they shall be one flock and there shall be one shepherd and that is Jesus Christ. Others we must save them by snatching them out of fire. The book of Jude now, travel with me. The book of Jude. Are you there, Maru? Now, as I even take a, uh, as I even take a glass of water, Maru, read with me the book of Jude, the book of Jude, as I even conclude our presentation today. The book of Jude, chapter number one. Of, of course, it has only one chapter. Go to verse number 23, Maru. Yes, I'm reading from New King James Version. The book is Jude, chapter number one, verse 23. But others save with fear pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Amen. Amen. Thank you. It's very clear. It says, others, you must save them by pulling them out of fire. Kuna watu wa gumu sana. And we must force this gospel onto them. 
Later, the light it or not, they must accept Jesus Christ and the world must come to an end because it is written and the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto the entire world and then the end shall come. Friends, we are the channel for this mission. We as God's people, we are God, we are the people whom God depend. Bwana anakuitaji. Je, Bwana atakutegemea uweze kufanya jambo lile ambalo amekuweka hapo uweze kulitenda? Waimbaji wakaimba wimbo ambao unasema Bwana akuhitaji. Wewe kila wakati anakuhitaji a song sung by redemption that God may the God depend on you. God is really depending on you Tabi. He's depending on you Yunis. Moses, God is depending on you Brian. God is really depending on you. Richard, there is no any other person God is depending on. God is depending on you as his person. God is depending on you. Wewe kama mtu wake. The mission of the church of Christ is to save the perishing sinners. To is to make known of the love of God to men and to win them to Christ by the efficacy of his love, to tell him of this wondrous love. You know, some people, they are like, what am I going to tell the world? What will I tell them? Just tell them, come and see. You know that woman who was sitting with Jesus Christ there at Jacob's well. Bada Yesu Christo kumubiria, maabu mbao sirefu, baada ya kujua ule ni Yesu Kristo, alienda akita wa Samaria kiwambia, njooni muone, yule alie niambia siri za ambu zote. Sometimes you don't need to know the, any, you cram any verse. Sometimes you may not be knowing verses like what. Sometimes you may not be knowing to quote some things like you know, like, eh, like Marwa. But you can just tell the soul, come and see what the Lord has done for me. We are the channel and we are God's channel, not in any other planet, not in Mars, not in Jupiter, not in any other planet. We are God's channel. We are God's people who are going to accomplish this mission here on earth because there is no any other earth. It is here on earth. This mission must end up here on earth. We are placed here on earth. Every nation must hear the gospel. Every tribe must hear the gospel. Every kindred must hear the gospel. Friends, the work is upon us. Hakuna kazi ngine. Hakuna adi. Nibiona watu wengine wa Tanzania. Kwa kenda pale airport. Watu wa meketi kwenye airport. Wana, wana, awana visa, wanasema sasa, sisi tunataka tupande ndege, tuende, tuende, tuende inchi zingine kuenda kubiri. And uh, I was wondering, does it mean all people in Tanzania are saved and they know Jesus Christ? Why can't you start at home? You know, that's why the right of a song uh, writes, the, uh, the right of a song says this, uh, uh, in that song, which we sing, hark the voice of Jesus calling, who will go and work today, fields are wet, the harvest is waiting, who will bear the sheaves away? And then he says, if you cannot cross the ocean and the, and the heathen lands explore, you can find the heathen nearer. You can find a sinner nearer. You can start with your neighbor. You can help them at your door. If you cannot speak like angels, if you cannot preach like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus. You can say he died for all. Friends, there is nothing much you need to know. There is nothing much you need to know. You just need to tell people there is a bomb in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bomb in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. Sometimes you may feel discouraged and think that your works are in vain, but then the Holy Spirit is there to revive your soul again. Remember this, friends, if you cannot preach like Peter, if you cannot pray like Peter, Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus and say he died for all. There is a bomb in Gilead. To make the wounded whole, there is a bomb in Gilead to heal the sin, sick soul. Friends, I finish by giving us this appeal. You know, we are being told we are being told that uh, uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as we finish this work, we must start with Jerusalem. Where, what do I mean when I say Jerusalem? Our mission must start first with our those who are closest unto us. Start with our family. There are some of us, our family members don't even know Jesus. Our family members don't go to church. Our family members are not Adventists. And yet we want to go and preach to others and our family members go to hell. Go for your family first. Go for your neighbors. 
go for your friend. Then in all, we'll go to Judea and Samaria, meaning to those who don't normally have contact with, perhaps even to another city, perhaps even to another country nearby, and finally to the end of the earth. Our ultimate goal is to reach those far away from home and family. Simply stated, our place of mission is to those at home, near home, and then far beyond home. Get this right. Our mission, our place of mission is to those at home, near home, and then far beyond home. Surely there are several creative ways for each of us to accomplish this missionary. Appeal and do our best to reach all of God's lost children, no matter where they live. God is calling us, is giving us a challenge today. And our weekly challenge is this, friends, as I even finish, I want to, I want, I want to challenge you that to pray, pray every day this week as we are starting another week just after this sabbath for the community where you live pray for that community where you live god has placed you there for a reason pray for it somebody must be saved from that community research the demographic another thing i want you to do i want you to research of uh, the demographic of your area what kind of people live around you the ethnic the religious background old young poor wealthy language spoken and so on ask god to show you how you can be a channel of his love to them ask god to show you how you can be a channel of his love to them in jesus name i like us to believe and pray we thank you dear lord again because you have reminded us that if we cannot be able to preach like Peter or pray like Paul, we can just tell the love of Jesus. You have reminded us once more that you personally went into the arena and folded your sleeves and you actualized your words into actions. And today, dear Lord, we are tired of just saying, saying without doing. Today, we want to start doing it. We are praying for our community. There is that soul which, dear Lord, has never known you. I pray that may you send your Holy Spirit to go and disturb that soul until they come unto you. We, know, may not, we, we, do, we may not know them by their names, but you, God, who numbers our air, you know them. Disturb them. Bring them to you. Let them be saved in Jesus' name. We also pray for our neighbors. We pray, dear Lord, for those who are around us, despite Despite their background, despite their ethnicity, their age, their, 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 their status in terms of whether they are poor or wealthy, despite their languages, and so on and so on. God, we are praying, may you show us a way to express your love to them, that they may see you and get to be saved. Let your will be done tonight. Bless every soul on board. Bless their family too. That if we make it to heaven, let us make it with our families. Not only our families, our friends, our neighbors, and the entire world. It will be a joy in heaven if all of us, we are marching through Zion. In Jesus' name, 